a long time, Gerda could walk no more. She knew that she had to rest her tired little legs before going anywhere, so she settled down under a tree. She was most surprised when a merry raven came and hopped towards her. Ka, ka. Good day, good day, he said. Gerda was surprised and delighted. She had been feeling very lonely, and the raven looked like a friendly little fellow. Have you, by any chance, seen my good friend Kay? She asked and told him everything that had happened. She described Kay carefully. The raven closed his eyes and thought about it. You know what? I might have seen your friend, he said. Gerda stood up in joy. She hugged the raven so hard that she nearly squeezed him flat. Oh, really? Can you please take me to the place? Is he anywhere around here? Asked Gerda. I don't mind taking you there. It isn't too far anyway. It's just that your friend might have forgotten you. For he lives with the princess now, said the raven. Is that so? Asked Gerda. I'll tell you the story as we walk. Listen, in the kingdom where we're going now, there lives a princess who is extraordinarily clever. She reads many books and knows what's happening everywhere around the world. She decided to marry, and there was only one thing she wanted. What? Asked Gerda out of curiosity. She invited everyone to come and speak with her. She promised to choose the one who'd talk boldly and wisely with her. And feel at home in her presence," said the Raven. "Did Kay come to the palace?" she asked. "I saw a little person walk boldly through the palace, and he didn't even have a horse. He had long hair and wore shabby clothes," said the Raven. "I also remember that his boots creaked loudly when he walked." "Oh, it must be Kay. There's no doubt," cried Gerda in delight. I remember he had his creaky boots on when we went to play with his sled that day. From what I heard, he didn't come to woo the princess. He merely wanted to speak to her and gain wisdom. It turned out that the princess liked his bold and polite nature very much," said the Raven. "Will you take me to meet Kay, please?" Gerda begged. "Of course," said the Raven. "My bride lives in the palace." And she can arrange for us to meet the prince. The raven then led her through the royal garden. That night, after the lights went out, the raven led Gerda through a back door that was half open. Another raven was waiting for them there. What a pleasure to meet you," said the second raven. "Come, let's go up these stairs and head to the royal chamber where the prince rests." A single lamp was burning in the chamber. And Gerda saw the prince lying in his bed. Oh, Kay, how I've missed you! Gerda said in a loud whisper. The prince heard her and turned around. Gerda was surprised and dismayed to see that it was not Kay after all. By this time, the princess had also woken up. Who are you, little girl, and what are you doing here? Asked the princess. Gerda sat down and told them her story. She wiped her eyes and sniffed loudly. The prince and princess felt very sorry for her. They praised the ravens for helping Gerda, but gently told them that they should never raise false hopes without being sure. You can sleep here for the night, the prince said. I'll arrange for a fine horse and carriage to take you to meet your friend, the princess offered. And I see that you are badly in need of a pair of shoes. You shall have those too. Gerda bowed and thanked them for their generosity. The next day, Gerda was dressed in the finest clothes. The princess sent her off in a splendid horse and carriage with a coachman, footman, and outriders. Gerda waved and thanked them both and the ravens for everything they'd done for her. The prince and the princess wished her success, and the ravens flew along with her as long as they could manage. Then finally, bid her farewell. The prince and princess are sleeping at this late hour. What am I going to do now? Well, firstly, you need to ring the bells, then play the melody that lily flowers love. That must be Kay. We need to wake him up. Oh, I was wrong. It's not Kay. Who are you? What happened? Your Majesty. This girl looks for her sworn brother. 
He has been missing for days. Oh, poor girl. You are probably freezing. Do not worry. We will help you. Let's get a warm outfit for you. This is just perfect for a long and cold trip. Thank you so much. I feel warmer now. There is a carriage outside waiting for you. Have a good trip. Gerda rode through the thick woods and the carriage sparkled and shone like diamonds. All of a sudden, a band of robbers jumped out from behind the bushes. Halt! If you value your life, cried the robbers, flashing their swords menacingly. They pushed away the coachman and everybody else and caught hold of the horse by its reins. The leaders of the robbers was a tall female robber who looked fearsome and bold. Her daughter, a girl about Gerda's age, was sitting on her shoulders, watching everything with shining eyes. Ouch! She cried and dropped the knife that she'd raised. Her daughter had bitten her in the ears. You will not harm the little girl, said the daughter. She will stay in our castle and play with me. After they'd looted everything, the female robber and the robber maiden got into their carriage. They made Gerda get inside as well. They rode for a long time through the thick woods. The robber maiden took Gerda's warm woolen muff for herself. Then she hugged Gerda and said, Nobody will harm you as long as we're friends. But if you dare to refuse to be my friend, I'll push you off the carriage. It seemed like they'd been riding forever, but the carriage finally stopped in front of an old and crumbling castle. It was riddled with many pigeonholes and looked so ramshackle that Gerda was afraid that it would fall down. The robber maiden led Garda straight to her room, which had carpets and straw beds in the corner. You shall spend the night with me and my little friends, said the robber maiden, pointing to the pigeons. Gerda noticed that there were about a hundred pigeons and all of them were fast asleep. In a corner stood a reindeer. He had a copper ring around his neck. Meet my pet, said the robber maiden, pointing to the reindeer. After they'd had a meal and settled down to sleep, the robber maiden says, Now tell me, what brought you here to the dark woods all alone? Gerda narrated everything that had happened. She told her about Kay and how much she missed him. The robber maiden listened, but soon she grew drowsy and slept. She kept her hand over Gerda while she slept. The robber maiden was snoring loudly, but Gerda was wide awake. Suddenly, the pigeons called out to her. Oh, we've seen the boy. We've seen him travel in a sledge pulled by a white carriage, they said. It belongs to the Snow Queen. Do you know where they are headed? Gerda asked, hopefully. The Snow Queen has gone to Lapland, where there is ice and snow everywhere. Ask the reindeer. He knows the place well, said the pigeons. Of course I know the place, said the reindeer. It's a glorious place, and it is beautiful. The Snow Queen has her summer tent there, but she doesn't live there. She lives in the icy, cold North Pole. Oh, poor Kay. He'll be taken there unless we rescue him soon, said Gerda, and slept with a heavy heart. In the morning, she told the robber maiden about what the pigeons and the reindeer had told her. If you want to see your friend so badly, I'll help you, the robber maiden said gruffly. We'll have to be quick. Because if my mother wakes up, you'll never be able to escape. Oh, thank you so much, said Gerda. The robber maiden looked straight at the reindeer and asked, If I set you free, will you take this little girl safely to Lapland? The reindeer nodded and jumped in delight. She didn't waste any time. She threw the door open and lifted Gerda onto the reindeer's back. Here, have these woolen gloves. For you'll need them, she said, stuffing a pair of gloves into Gerda's hands. I want the woolen muff for myself, but these will do for you. She then untied the rope and the reindeer bounded out of the room quickly. 
The reindeer leapt through bushes and crossed the moors fast as he could. Before long, they were in Lapland. Some pigeons saw Kay. They say that he is in the Snow Queen's palace in Lapland. Lapland? Reindeer, do you know where that is? Of course. I was born there. I played on the snowy fields when I was young. Well, little girl, I'm ready to help you and even lend you my reindeer. But you can't just ride on it. You have to find a rope and a pillow to make a saddle. Oh, there it is. The saddle is ready. Also, don't forget to take a bridle. You found it. Take the woolen boots and mittens. You got it. Now you're ready for the long trip. Hey, little rascal, bring me something to drink. Oops, you can't go until my mom falls asleep. What should we do? I must leave quickly. I believe we could make a sleeping potion. Great idea, reindeer. Help me make a sleeping potion. It's almost ready. Let's dilute it. Compot is for kids. Yes, ale is what we need. Now we have to stir it. The potion is ready. She has fallen asleep. Now you can be on your way. The reindeer ran on and on until he was exhausted and finally stopped before a little house. In that house, there lived an old Lapland woman. When she saw how cold and tired they looked, she immediately invited them inside. Why is a little girl riding all by herself on a reindeer? She asked. Gerda was too weak to answer. So the reindeer told her everything. Oh, you poor thing. The Lapland woman said with pity. Didn't you know that the Snow Queen has left for Finland? That's where her country house is and you have a long way to go. At least another hundred miles. Gerda looked very crestfallen, and the Lapland woman said kindly, Don't fret, little one. My good friend lives in Finland. I'll give you a letter explaining everything, and she will be glad to help you. But first, warm yourself and have something to eat. Gerda warmed herself by the fire and ate well. The Lapland woman wrote something on a dried fish and gave it to her. Then the woman lifted Gerda back onto the reindeer's back and tied her on safely and the reindeer took off at once. Before long, they were trotting through Finland and soon they found the friend's house. The house had no door but a large chimney, so they knocked at the chimney. When the Finland woman opened the door, they were greeted by a blast of heat. It was very warm inside and Gerda soon had beads of sweat on her forehead. The Finland woman was dressed in light clothes, and she made Gerda remove all her layers as well. Gerda enjoyed the warmth, and then handed over the fish. The Finland woman read the message and nodded. I know you have many magical powers, said the reindeer politely. Can you please give this little girl a magic potion or spell to help her defeat the Snow Queen and get her friend back? Kay has changed now, she said. He has settled down happily with the Snow Queen, and he won't leave her even if Gerda manages to rescue him. The reason is that he has splinters from an evil mirror in his heart and eye. Gerda has all the powers she needs to defeat the Snow Queen and rescue Kay. If she can't do something by herself, there's very little we can do to help her. The Finland woman told them that they had to hurry. She lifted Gerda back onto the reindeer and tied her up. 
She was in such a hurry, and Gerda was wearing neither her boots nor her gloves. But the reindeer didn't want to stop. He went galloping so fast that he couldn't turn back and head over to the Finland woman's house to get Gerda's boots and gloves. The reindeer stopped only when he reached a bush with red berries. There, he set Gerda down, and she sped straight towards the Snow Queen's palace. She ran as fast as her legs could carry her. She saw a regiment of snowflakes approaching her from a distance. Gerda was sure that they'd not fallen from the sky because they were lined up outside the palace. The snowflakes came in different, terrifying shapes. Some looked like bears, while some looked like knotted snakes, and still others looked like large porcupines. Gerda was frightened because the snowflakes were alive and ran towards her to attack. She prayed to God and repeated the Lord's prayer that she'd been taught. It was so cold that she saw wisps of smoke coming out of her mouth. The smoke grew thicker and thicker and took the form of angels. The angels had spears and shields in their hands, and by the time she'd finished saying the prayer, there was a legion of angels all around her. The angels thrust their spears at the snowflakes. The snowflakes shattered into a thousand pieces. Gerda walked on bravely. The angels patted her gently on the head, and quite miraculously, Gerda found the cold much more bearable. Hello, travelers. What brings you here? This girl is looking for her brother. The Snow Queen took him to her palace. We need to find that palace. Oh, then you need to get to Vindmark. I'll give you the message that you can take to the Finland woman. She lives around that part of town. She will tell you to reach your destination. But what can I use to write the message? I don't have any paper. No, I can write on that. Excellent. This is what I need. While I'm writing the message, can you help me cook this fish? The fish is cooked. Oops, I think you burnt the fish. That's okay. The fish is cooked. The fish is cooked. Well, the message is ready. You should be on your way now. Thank you so much. We have to find the Finland woman quickly. Be careful. I almost fell on the icy ground. Be careful! Land woman said that we should give you this message. Well, let me see the message. All right, I think I know what to do. If you want to rescue Kay, what you need to do is remove the broken pieces of glass from his heart and eyes. Otherwise, he won't remember you. You are a very wise woman. 
Could you please give a magic potion or spell to this little girl to help her defeat the Snow Queen? She already has a great power. She traveled halfway around the world. People and animals are eager to help her. Her greatest power is her big, kind heart. This power alone can rescue Kay. There is no need for any other spell or potion. All right, but what should we do next? Go to the Snow Queen's garden right away. There's no time to lose. It's not far from here. Ride directly to the north. All right. Thank you very much. Bird Games. She is such a brave girl. Gerda sped to the palace. She stared in awe at the Snow Queen's palace because the walls were made of driving snow. The windows and doors were made of cutting winds, and there were hundreds of empty halls. Right in the middle of the biggest hall of snow was a big frozen lake. In the middle of the lake, there was an icy throne where the Snow Queen sat when she was home. But thankfully. The Snow Queen had gone off to warm lands to look down into the mouths of two volcanoes, Mount Vesuvius and Mount Etna. Gerda was overjoyed to see Kay. He was sitting on the ground playing with some slabs of ice. Kay looked nearly blue and black with the cold, and he was still in his ragged clothes. But he didn't seem to feel the cold winds or the icy chillness. When the Snow Queen kissed him, she'd taken away all the feeling of cold from his body. He was trying to arrange the ice in different ways to make all sorts of figures with those slabs. Sometimes he found figures that represented a word, but he had not succeeded in finding the words he was desperately looking for. It so happened that the word he was searching for most desperately was eternity. The Snow Queen had told him, "Find a figure to represent eternity, and I'll set you free. You can be your own master, and I'll present you with the whole world and a new pair of skates." Maybe the Snow Queen was confident that he would never guess it ever. Kay was very busy with his ice puzzle. As she left, Kay was all alone. He didn't look up, nor did he show any emotion. He sat very still. And looked almost lifeless. It was at that very moment that Gerda stepped through a portal and arrived at the very place where Kay sat. The moment she saw him, she was so overcome with joy that she ran towards him, shouting in joy. Oh, Kay! How I've missed you! How cold and blue you look, my poor Kay! She embraced him and cried in joy. I found you at last, and all my efforts didn't go in vain. Kay sat quite still, numb and cold, with all the time he'd spent in the icy palace. He didn't even recognize Gerda. Overcome by emotion and joy, Gerda wept over his shoulders, and as she cried her heart out, the hot tears rolled out of her cheeks and plopped onto his chest. Her pure tears melted away the splinter. That had been struck in his heart for such a long time. Gerda held his hands and cried on his shoulders, and that was when Kay found tears in his eyes too. When he began to cry, the splinter that had been stuck fast in his eye rolled out with the tears and fell onto the icy ground below. Immediately afterwards, Kay was filled full of joy and warmth, and he recognized Gerda, his sweet and loyal friend. Oh, Gerda, hasn't it been long since we saw each other? Kay asked. And where am I? I know not how I came here. How empty and cold this place is! What have I been doing here? Said Kay. Gerda and Kay held their hands together, and they looked so blissful that the ice slabs on the ground began to dance around them in joy. They danced on and on. And finally, lay down on the ice. When the ice slabs lay down on the ice, they formed the exact letters needed for eternity. K was now his own master and free to leave the place and go to where he wished. That was not all. He was entitled to a new pair of skates, and the whole world was his, as promised by the Snow Queen. This is the gateway to the Snow Queen's throne room. Can you please help me to open it?
Thank you. Now I need to hide somewhere. Well, boy, did you manage to assemble the symbol of eternity? No matter how hard I try, I can't do it. Well, if you're able to do it, I'll give you the whole world and a new pair of skates. I'll be leaving you for now and fly to warmer places. All right. My dear Kay, I finally found you. He doesn't recognize me. What should I do so that he can remember me? Unfortunately, flowers don't grow here. Great! I think I could sing him my song. The rose in the valley is blooming so sweet, and angels descend there the children to greet. Gerda, my dear Gerda, where have you been all this time? Oh, it doesn't matter. We are together again. That's what matters. Now we can go back home. Oh no, I'm locked inside here. To get out, I need to solve the Snow Queen's puzzle. Can you help us? We need to put together the symbol of eternity. Now we can go home. Okay, but first I have to help these animals. Of course, we need to unfreeze them. This Finally, is it! Finally, we can go home. They held onto each other's hands and ran out of the palace, heading straight for the bush with red berries. The reindeer was still waiting for Gerda, and beside him was another young reindeer. Hurrah! cried Kay and Gerda as they rode on their reindeers. They exchanged each other's stories along the way. First, they went to Finland Woman's house and warmed themselves before proceeding on their journey. Kay felt much better as the warm room thawed his cold hands and feet. Then they went on to visit the Lapland woman, who fed them and repaired his sled. They rode for a long time, and soon they heard the church bells ring. Oh, look, Kay! Gerda cried out suddenly. We're in our own town! Sure enough, they turned round a corner and found that they were back in their own street with all its familiar houses. They got down from their reindeers and sped straight into Kay's grandma's room. Everything looked just the same. Yet, they knew that something had changed. They found that the roses from the rose bushes were peeping inside through the window. Their chairs were there near the window, and they went to sit down there as they always used to. And Kay and Gerda looked in each other's eyes, and all at once they understood the old hymn. The rose in the valley is blooming so sweet. And angels descend there, the children to greet. There they sat, as two grown-up persons. Grown-up, and yet children. Children, at least in heart. And it was summertime, a warm, glorious summer. Mm -hmm.